Greetings, I'm Roger Newbold, and welcome to episode 28 of Experience Photography. Now, my fellow photographer, my good friend, my partner, and editor for this episode is Mr. Matt Rich. Now, he is the titan of astonishing talent. He makes all of this vlog project work. Are you there, my friend? Having some trouble with Titans? <laughs> Great! <laughs> In episode 27, we talked about standing on the shoulders of giants, taking advantage of the ground they broke so that we could achieve more freely today. I hope the advice helped you so you could, you know, peer over your peers. Now today is another giant endeavor at finding new inspiration and new methods and helpful exemplars. So today, let's meet our guest, Mr. Keith Carter. He's a true master of photography. Look at him in a picture of him in figure, 20, uh, figure number one. He described as the poet of the ordinary. Now, Keith says of himself, well, I photograph from when I was five years old. I don't really remember a lot about how I got that camera, but I think my mom, who had been a photographer, must have given it to me for, you know, my birthday or Christmas or something like that. Now, Carter was studying business at Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas, where he took classes it changed his absolute life. He continues, I was a business major, but I, you know, wasn't really particularly interested in that. So I took one art course that I absolutely loved. It was a design course, and my mother had always been a professional photographer. We were a single parent household, and since I was five, I went back and asked her if I could borrow a camera. She said yes. So I went down to the river and photographed some guys standing around fishing. It wasn't a, a you know a great picture. It was probably my very first serious thing. I had a shot process the image and she said, "Well, honey, you have a good eye." <laughs> You have a nice sense of light. And I tell people it's probably because good parenting. And that put that on me right on a good track. And I thought, okay, I have a good eye. Carter recalls his childhood fondly as he remembers his mother, a strong single parent who owned her own photo studio. When my father left, she started this small studio she had uh, been a college girl and photographed, you know, other college girls. She would travel around the Midwest. So I grew up in and around photography and, you know, interested in the things that guys are interested in. And it surely wasn't art at that time. I was interested in Cadillacs, hillbilly music and girls and, you know, that kind of stuff. Carter said he truly fell in love with photography after that first design course and started a journey on a self-taught photographer at the age of 20. Take a peek at figure number two. It's the Fireflies. A very famous picture by Keith. In the beginning, like a lot of people, we didn't have photography courses at Lamar. So I pretty much was self-taught. I spend a lot of time getting books from the library. And whoever's book I got, you know, I would be them for a while. I would just replicate them. I did that for almost 10 years while I learned everything I could and did all kinds of little jobs. Anything I could do around here at the same time to save money. And then... I took a bus trip to New York. Carter said the decision to hop on that bus to New York 
at the age of 22, shaped his life. It set the course for everything else he did in his career. I wrote to the Museum of Modern Art <laughs> and asked them if I could come up and see their collection. And I was a serious scholar. He said, I got a letter back from them and said, yeah, come on up. Who do you want to see? I knew only three or four photographers, so I sold everything I had, took the Greyhound bus to New York City in February. It was the least expensive way to get to New York. I thought I had enough money. I could stay for a month. <laughs> it lasted just short of three weeks. And, man, was it cold. But I saw all of these great prints. And as for me, I saw the people whose work I'd really had admired. The museum collection where the, they had the pictures. You could hold them. You could see them. I could see who they spotted and where the little things were. It's exciting. It changed my life. I've never been to New York. And it's February. It's snowing. It's cold. And one thing I did that changed my life during that uh, week, I walked down the village. I passed this, this skinny little guy. <laughs> and uh, he's wearing an overcoat, and he had a fat cat, and he had a sign around that said, uh, Poems, one dollar. Well, I walked right on by because dollars were precious. And then I thought, well, man... That's bad karma. So I went back, bought the first poem on the list. And the first poem on the list was Rock Your Ass Off, which c consisted of a non-rap before rap stuff. And all he did was shout at the top of his lungs, Rock Your Ass Off! Rock Your Ass Off! for about 40 times. Carter said, as he sat on the bus on his way back to Beaumont, the one thing that kept replaying through his mind was the encounter with the man in the poem that he had bought. Now, I'm on the bus riding back home. I've seen all of these great things, and I thought, man, I'm really going to get focused. I'm going to work really, really hard, so I'm going to, well, rock my ass off. Uh, he said, it's been a metaphor, and I still think that today. Whatever keeps you working in a focused direction is like that mantra. Just go rock your ass off. When Carter returned home, he said he was ready to pour all of his assets and hard work into his career, build his life that he wanted for himself. He found immediate inspiration in his hometown of Beaumont. Now, Beaumont, Texas, is right near the Gulf of Mexico, <laughs> directly south of the heel of the state of Louisiana. He said, I, des I decided, particularly when I came back from New York, that that's where I live, and it's flat. It's tangled and deeply green, Hurricanes rolled in, you know, all the time. There's four out of the five most poisonous snakes in North America that live here. And they're carnivorous plants. He says, so you have a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. You have black immigration. You have the Vietnamese industry. You have <laughs> a ton of Mexican mythology. Crackers. Pecker Woods, Rednecks, all of this giant gumbo culture. I thought, oh my God, that's what my subject should be. If you study the word vernacular, it refers to using a language or a dialect native to a very specific region or country or being in a non-standard language or dialect of a place. Well, in brief, it means that things are rooted in a very low, small locale. It is indigenous or native to a certain place, or a certain geographic area, or certain people. And the use of the word vernacular honors the diverse culture, the areas and groups 
It helps you to understand them. And this is exactly what Carter has mastered. No matter where he went in his travels have taken him, he became them, the people he was with. He photographed, and they are genuine. Take, take a look at figure number three, the woman, the storekeeper. This is, this is the way he works. Now, I, I deeply urge you to go read Carter's book. You, you can look at it in the library, but this is one I'd buy, and, and I have it in my library. It's called From Uncertain to Blue. If you read it, you'll get a sense of how his travels began and how his work progressed. There's also an online video uh, of the art of uh, photography by Keith Carter. And it's nicely done. It provides a, a real sense of who Carter is. Really, a, very much a poet. The book I referred to grew from a project. It was originally meant to be an anniversary to his uh, gift to his wife, Pat. He, he said, my little book started out as an as a actual whim 30 years ago at our 10th anniversary present to my wife. I was trying to think of something that she'd rather do than, you know, buy a bottle of champagne or something like that. So I suggested we take off every weekend for a full year and drive around and visit the hundred small places in Texas that had really strange and unusual names. So we did. We ended up spending two years doing that. Two of the towns uh, we visited were called Uncertain, which is not too far from Beaumont and blue. The book was called From Uncertain to Blue, and, and when that came out, I didn't really anticipate being a book. It was just sort of a thing that you do that was pleasurable, and to be with my wife. But when that book came out, all kinds of things happened. That was an era before books were, you know, online or all the time. It was like my my holy grail. It was my entire world. Carter said what he loved about the experience was that he also found that the love for black and white photography, and he began to develop his own style, his own sense of how things should be done. He said it was just practicing what other photographers had done in their style. He says, Personally, I think it takes a while for you to find that style. So he said, I tried out a lot of things. You know, you have to find people whose work you like, who you admire and their style and other little bits about them. And after a period of time, when you assimilate those things, it seems uh, that things are just natural. You get involved and start to find your own pathway. But when you want to have something to say, you want to have a reason to make images. But for 10 years, I was everybody else. I tried them all out. Carter said he fell in love with black and white because of its longevity, the aesthetic and the romance. He said, once I did the little book, all of a sudden, people all around the country art directors, you know, they wanted to hire me to do stories or something. And this is before I started teaching at Lamar. The reason they hired me was because I had a certain kind of style, not because I was the best photographer. He says, I, I looked at things in a certain way. I started to take this place with me. I tried to make some kind of photographs everywhere I was. So it evolved through books and looking at art and reading poetry. And after a while, hey, you become yourself. Take a look at figure four, the railway station. Keith remarked, I don't generally make beautiful photographs. I make interesting photographs. 
Carter said he feels like he accomplished exactly what he set out to do when he made that chilly trip to New York all so many years ago. What we've offered you today is an encouraging path to do the same, to break out of the herd. Let yourself dream and soar away. You know, you got to do new things. Work with it enough vigor that you'll find your yourself and illuminate that. For further study in this vein, consider reviewing the work of figure number five, Sam Abel. Or in figure number six, Manuel Alvarez Bravo. Figure number seven, here's one that works uh, really close to home, William Eggleston. And figure number eight, the famous Sally Man. There are four more giants for you to count on for some great inspiration. Please remember what Keith said. I want to be made better personally. That's the gig. Now, shooting in the vernacular of your own home, your neighborhood, or your local district allows you to really become intimate with your subjects. So, there you have the challenge, my friends. We hope to see you out there perfecting the soul. Now, our time's up for today, but Matt and I hope you have gleaned something important from your look at our master of today. If you've enjoyed this presentation, give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our site. Tinkle that little bell for future notices. Let all your friends know that they can find the best experience information online. So, take a chance. Explore relentlessly. Until we meet here again on screen, I offer you a tip of the hat. Cheerio, my friends. See you soon.